has done its best to welcome the U.S. president on his first official visit. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe sat down for burgers with Mr. Trump on Sunday, catering to the U.S. president's food preferences. Uh, the two even signed golfing hats together for lunch. And if you can't read it, the hats say, um, Donald and Shinzo make alliance even greater. After that display of friendship, they played golf, Mr. Trump's favorite pastime. Uh, despite all these happy pictures, President Trump did not hold back from scolding Japan over trade with the U.S. We want free and reciprocal trade, but right now our trade with Japan is not free and it's not reciprocal. And I know it will be. Okay, so let's take a closer look now, Mr. Trump's relationship with Japan. Uh, Tomohiko Taniguchi is the special advisor to Prime Minister Abe. He joins us now live from Tokyo. And, sir, thank you very much indeed for joining us here on the program. And, and let's first talk about trade. Um, Prime Minister Abe and President Trump, we know they're in agreement when it comes to North Korea, but not trade. Trump says that trade with Japan is unfair. He wants a better deal. What does Japan make of that? Well, the Japanese response is going to be that uh, the trade deficit uh, the United States has with Japan, uh, while sizable, is proportionately far less than ever before. And it's uh, just less than 10 percent, as opposed to the total amount of trade deficits the United States has with the rest of the world. That's point number one. And point number two is the Japanese companies have been investing a lot in the uh, automotive sector and other sectors in the United States, thereby uh, having generated a stunning number of 860,000 jobs. That's second only to the number the, uh, of the United Kingdom that has uh, invested in the United States for much, much longer than the Japanese have. Got it. So that's how Japan sees the trade relationship. But we know that Japan and the U.S. are currently not on the same page when it comes to trade. Discussions are continuing. So do you think that Trump and Abe will soon reach a, a deal and see eye to eye on trade? Well, one of the wisest things that the two leaders have chosen to do is to delegate the trade negotiations uh, down the road to their deputies in the United States, Vice uh, President uh, 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 Pence and in Japan, Deputy Prime Minister Aso. Uh, these are the people that are in charge uh, of uh, discussing the trade agendas down the road. Hmm. Um, now, Shinzo Abe, on the issue of North Korea, um, the Japanese Prime Minister says that tomorrow there will be more action on freezing assets uh, of North Korean assets and individuals. Um, how concerned is Japan? of retaliation by North Korea, of angering North Korea? Rather, the sign of weakness and hesitation uh, could very well invite more uh, provocations, not less. So uh, we must maintain a tougher position towards Pyongyang. Hmm. Um, does that mean strengthening its military arsenal. We heard from Donald Trump at a press conference today. He said that Japan could shoot North Korean missiles out of the sky with military equipment bought from the U.S. Do you think that there will be more military deals signed as a result of this visit? Well, it's common knowledge that Japan must to uh, must invest into its missile shield uh, more, and the equipment that uh, the Japanese have uh, uh, chosen to chosen to have uh, has been from the United States. Uh, uh, rather, it's been developed jointly between the United States and Japan. So down the road, it's going to be the same. The Japanese will have to buy more to beef up its uh, defense uh, shield. Hmm. It, it was a pretty packed schedule for the U.S. president while he was visiting Japan. And in fact, earlier today, the U.S. president met with families uh, of Japanese citizens believed to be abducted by, by North Korea. Why was that on the agenda? Why is that significant? It, it all started uh, from uh, Mr. Trump's initiative, uh, by which I mean that uh, Mr. Trump uh, put the case of uh, abduction in uh, to his uh, uh, address that he delivered to the United Nations General Assembly uh, uh, earlier uh, in September. And then uh, uh, Donald Trump uh, uh, volunteered to uh, include that schedule uh, to his itinerary, 
and so started was this uh, uh, process. Mm. And a final question for you, sir, just about the overall trip and how Japan really, you know, rolled out the red carpet for Donald Trump. You know, Prime Minister Abe heaped praise on the U.S. leader. He took him out for a round of golf. Um, this this visit really seemed about making sure that Donald Trump is happy. Why was that a top priority for Shinzo Abe? It is between the two leaders of the two biggest democratic powers uh, in the East Asia. But what's important is that uh, both leaders have chosen to share a vision that stretches from uh, the Western Pacific to the Indian Ocean. They called it the Indo-Pacific vision. And I think uh, uh, that's the vision that the United States and Japan must uh, continue to uh, hold dear. And uh, in that region, uh, Shinzo Abe and Donald Trump uh, mentioned that uh, they were going to work to preserve uh, the rules-based international order. That's, I think, uh, what was most important. Tomohiko Tanaguchi, Special Advisor to the Japanese Prime Minister. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you.